Hello Year 4, welcome to your second math session. This is all about ordering money. So we've got to think carefully about what ordering means and I've got a couple of examples to go through with you here um, to give you a little bit of help and a little bit of support if you're not quite sure, if you're finding it a little bit tricky and you are stuck. So let's get started. So this question here is asking us to compare amounts of money. You can see that there are two amounts. We're going to have to use these symbols here. And if you remember from the start of year four, one of the symbols means less than, one of the symbols means greater than or more than, and the other symbol, which you're really familiar with, means equal to. And we're going to have to use those to compare these amounts. Now, before we can even start, we're going to have to calculate, add up together, the total in this first box. So I can see I've got a £5 note, I've got a £1 coin, and I'm adding all these together. I've got a 10 pence, oh, little mistake there, I apologise. I have got a 10 pence coin and I've also got a 2 pence coin. So to add them together, I'm going to add the pounds first. So I've got five pound and one pound, which I know equals six. And then I'm going to add my pence together. I've got 10, add two, which I know is 12 pence. So in total here, I've got six pounds and 12 pence. I've still got to work out what's in the other box though before I can compare. And in this box, I've got two pounds, add one pound, um, adding on 50 pence, and I'm also adding on a two pence. Just like I did before, I'm gonna calculate my pounds first, and I know that two add one equals three. And then I'm gonna add on my pence. I can see that I've got 50 pence and I've got two pence down here, which in total is 52 pence. So I've got my two totals, which now means that I can compare them. I can see which one is greater than or less than. I know though that six pound is greater than three pound because I know that six is greater than three if I'm just thinking about numbers on a number line. So I'm going to look for the greater than symbol and I'm going to add it into the little circle. There are lots more questions like this for you to have a go at on your sheet. So moving on to the next type of question and that's writing amounts in ascending or descending order and this one is asking us to do it in ascending order. Now if you remember ascending order means from the smallest and we're looking at amounts here to the largest amount. Okay and it's the value. So it's not how many digits it's got, it's the value. So I'm going to use something to help me work out the value. I'm going to look really carefully at all the five different amounts. And I'm going to think about their place value. So I'm going to write myself, I'm going to draw myself a place value grid. And we're really familiar with these. We've used these lots in year four this year. So you might want this to help you equally. You might not need it. So here's my place value grid. I've got thousands, hundreds, tens and ones. And I'm going to pop in 130 pence. I can see it's got 100, three tens and no ones. And then I'm going to add in my next value, which is a 1,000, no hundreds, no tens and three ones. And I'm going to continue until I have put all the values into my place value chart. I can already see from the three values that I've got in there that two of those values have got thousands in them. And now I can see that two of those values don't have thousands. And I'm popping in another one, 8,060, and that's also got a thousands number. 
So I'm going to use this place value grid to help me work out which is the smallest of these values. You might not need a place value grid and that's equally fine. Okay. So I can see by looking at this place value grid that this amount here, like I said, has got 100, three tens and zero ones. Now the other value that's got 100 in, it's got 800. And I know that one is much lower than eight. So I've added it onto my line and I've ticked it so that I know I've used that one already. And then I'm gonna to continue to think about the place value. When I get to the thousands, I can see that there are two amounts there that both have 1,000 in them. So I'm going to look at the next column, which is the hundreds, and that's going to help me decide which one is biggest. And I can see that one of the values has got no hundreds, and one of them has got three hundreds. So I know that 1,003 pence is smaller than 1,300 pence. So I can add those onto my grid, onto my line, sorry. Crossing them off as I go. And I'm left with one. I'm left with 8,060 pence. Now I've been a bit naughty there. I've forgotten to put my pence in. So make sure that you make sure that you put those in. So ascending is smallest to largest. I'm going to need that to help you. And as I said before, descending is ordering them from largest to smallest. Okay, so think about that when you are looking at your questions like that today. Okay, moving on to the last one that we're going to look at, I think, for this section. We've got what could the missing amount of money be? And we've got two figures there. We've got this word could again. So remember from the session one, we know that could could mean, well, it does mean there's more than one possible solution. Okay, there's more than one possible way we can do it. And we're going to use some digit cards. I can see there. I'm just popping that in. It forgot to do it. I've been a bit sneaky. I've changed the numbers. So we've got 479 pence here. Um, I can see that the other value though is pounds. So I'm going to convert 479 pence to pounds. So I've got four pounds 79. So they're both the same. You could equally convert your pounds into pence. And now I can see that I've got four pounds 79 pence. And I've got 12 pound 63 pence. But I've got to find an amount that is less than £12.63 pence, looking at the symbols, and more than 479 pence. Now we've got these five digit cards here to help us. We've got a one, a three, a six, a nine, and a zero. You can only use each card once, and you don't have to use every card. So where am I going to start? What would be my starting point? Use post-it notes is a really good top tip and we've done this in class quite a lot. So use post-it notes or put your digits on little bits of paper so that you can move them around. It's really helpful when there's more than one answer. I can see already though that I can't use 36 as my first two digits because that would be 36 pounds something and that's greater than 12 pounds. So think really carefully about what amounts are going to be between £4.79 and between £12.63. How many different amounts can you find and can you work systematically? So that should help you with that one. So have fun. Enjoy math session two.